I left my heart to the sappers round K Sam And I sold my soul with my cigarettes to the black market man I had the Vietnam cold turkey from the ocean to the silver city And it's only other vets could understand And then I found forgotten dark side guarantees how there were no V-Day heroes in 1973 And how we sailed into Sydney Harbor I saw her an old friend but I couldn't kiss her Well she was blind and I was home to the love of man Well she was like so many more from that time on Well their lives were all so empty until they found out you But their minds were always broken And their hearts were held in fast to never change Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out K San by Cold Chisel, probably one of the most popular songs in Australian history and a very powerful song as well, the story of a Vietnam vet returning home and uh, man, we owe those guys a, a lot of respect and uh, in this song it's not without its challenges, it's kind of piano driven and pianos, because uh, they've got more fingers on the notes, they can use different chords to move between chords and that's kind of awkward on guitar. Uh, there's some beautiful guitar playing on the record from courtesy of Ian Moss on both acoustic and electric guitars but we're going to be looking at today is kind of a simpler acoustic strumming version but then I'm going to give you some a few fancier chords that you might like to add in as well that kind of emulate the the piano playing a bit as well. Now uh, one of the most challenging things with this song is remembering the chord progression because there's quite a few different chord changes going on throughout it so it's, it's definitely worth trying to learn, it, learn them in relation to the lyrics but also look for patterns within the chord changes so I definitely recommend just writing the, the chords out as well you know if you've got a songbook uh, that'll help you as well because it'll have the, the, the chords written above the lyrics exactly but it can it'd be helpful to see the, the chords on their own like I've got here in the book in the instrumental section you know that, that kind of thing would be a good idea for you to write that out as well so we're going to start off by just simplifying it down to four down strums okay and if you're looking at the songbook you'll notice notice that there's some chords in brackets and they're the ones that the piano is using to kind of link two chords together and to start off with we're going to be leaving those out okay and we're just going to be looking at kind of the straight easiest versions of the chords first off and then we're going to go through and look at uh, ways to fancy it up a little bit. So I should mention before we get going as well that uh, I've removed the capo uh, off the third fret which I, I just had to put on just to be able to sing it at all. I'm not much of a singer anyway really but uh, trying to do the Barnsley one was just really uh, sounding a bit awkward. Uh, it's very low for me in open position which is how I'm going to be teaching it to you now which is the, the chords that are used in the original but if any of you are struggling to sing it as well you might like to try putting the capo on the third fret and singing it an octave lower which was what I was doing there at the beginning. Okay so let's start by looking through the verse chord progression and we're going to be taking it really super slow because it's really important you understand how many beats each chord is played for. It's kind of broken into two halves you'll notice that there's the, the first half and the second half of the verse are very similar with just a slightly different ending but it, it's really important like I said that you write these down as, as we go so you know how many strums you're going to be or how many beats you're going to have uh, on on each chord. Uh, if you're struggling with any of the chords do go and check them out on my website. They're all included in the beginners course which is free on the, on the site and there'll be a link to all of the stuff that you need to know about in the description of this video or you just find it uh, on the website. So starting off we're going to have an E minor chord for a bar. So three, four, we got E minor, two, three, four to C, two, three, four to G, C, G, D with an F sharp bass to E minor, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, D, G, D or D7 to B7, E minor, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, and G, two, three, four to C, two, three, G with a B bass, A minor for a bar, F for a bar, then D, E minor, D with an F sharp bass to D, and then E minor, this is now the second half, 
to C, two, three, four, G, C, G, D, E minor, to C, two, three, four, to D, G, D or D7, to B7, into E minor, to C, to G, C, two, three, G with a B bass, A minor, D, G, C, G, D with an F sharp bass, and that's the end of the verse sequence. And as you can see, there's a lot going on there. So again, if you're looking at the chord sequence in my songbook, I just did it leaving out the bracketed chords because they're piano linking chords, okay, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. So one more time, I'm going to play through that now, and I'm going to kind of try and sing along with some of the bits of the melody as well. So you can see how the strumming and the melody and uh, all fits together because that's pretty important. We'll just still be nice and slow. So here we go. I emanated my heart to the C chord round K, G, C, G D with an F sharp bass And I emanated my soul with my C chord To my D, G, D7 to B7 And I've had my E, V at E minor a chord, C chord From the G chord to the silver C chord G with a B bass, A minor The da, the F could understand D, E minor D with an F sharp bass, back to D About the E minor forgotten C chord Guarantee C, G, D. How there were E minor, no V, D, C chords in D chord, G to D7 to B7. And how we E minor into Sydney C chord. I saw a G chord, but I couldn't C chord. Well, G with a B bass, A minor, and I was D to the lucky G, C, G, D with an F sharp bass, E minor. Okay, so first thing, really important that you get the chord sequence, that you know how many beats each chord is going to be played for. If you can't do that, it's going to be a real struggle to play along with the original recording. Now. What you probably want to do is start being able to play all the, the simple four down strums along with the recording, but it is quite far, so... I left my heart to the sappers round case and And I sold my soul to a cigarette with a black market man I had the Vietnam cold turkey and from the ocean to the silver city And it's only other vets good Okay, you want to be able to kind of get that together before you start trying to add any strumming because adding strumming to a chord progression that you're struggling with is going to be really difficult, if not impossible. So once you're confident with the real simple four down strums to the bar, the strumming pattern that I'd recommend you use as a kind of a basis for the song would be one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And the only little trick with it really is the very first down, you want to maybe accentuate the bass strings a little bit. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, bass, four, down, up, down, up, one, two, Okay, not a bass string, not one string, but strings. So just be working on trying to play the thicker strings, then the next down strum, mainly the thinner strings, and then it's kind of mostly thin strings, I guess, for the down, up, down, up at the end. But really work on trying to get that one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. And Another really, you know, if you haven't done one of my lessons before, one of the things that you might want to check out is, is muting all of the strings and strumming along with the original recording. So, strumming along with the original cold chisel. 
just really trying to lock into the groove and make it feel good because it's really important that you grasp this concept of things feeling good to play. It's not just about kind of getting it mathematically correct. Music's bigger than that and it's more human. So playing along with the original recordings, particularly with rhythm, can be a really, you know, really improve your game as a guitar player if you get into doing that. So uh, that would be the next stage. So take that chord progression that we've just done and add that rhythm part. So one, two, three, four. see straight away it's like it's got a little bit more groove on it, it, it it's a fairly up-tempo kind of a tune so once you're confident with that basic strumming pattern I definitely recommend that you let your ears feast on the original recording and check out some of the superbly tasteful guitar playing from Ian Moss he's a really really lovely uh, guitar parts going on uh, you should be able to work them out yourselves if you know the framework and you know what the chords are he tends to be picking out some notes individually so it kind of weaves in and out of the of the things that your ear picks up on that kind of thing uh, there's some great strumming and some good feels as well but there's it's a little bit more lead liney and and, and weave which is much better off frankly learning it on your own you know if you if you want to get into that kind of guitar playing you've got to get your ears onto it but it's not particularly difficult to hear it on this recording so I definitely uh, recommend that you check it out uh, but I do want to go through a couple of ways that you might emulate the piano kind of part on the guitar so the first thing is is using some of the linking chords so if I just do it really slowly the first part of the tune um, there's a D chord that links between the E minor and the C so I left my heart to the sappers round KCM. Okay, it's on the second line as well. I sold my soul with the cigarettes to the black market man. I'm going to show you that little movement as well. Okay, so the first thing is just checking out where that D chord falls. It's falling on beat four. Okay, it's really important. It's not like halfway through the, the through the bar. It's just happening there as, as a link, especially at speed. Uh, Can hear it's just it links things nice and on piano it's really easy because they got the chord and they just kind of move their hand down step by step it's a little bit more cumbersome on the guitar but it still sounds nice you don't have to add it in and uh, very often on the original recording I'm not hearing it done on the acoustic guitar part you, you can kind of ignore it and then just let the piano get on with doing that fancy stuff while you really sit down and think about the groove and locking in with the drums and, and making what you're playing really feel good you know you've got that as an option don't feel like you have to add that stuff or this other stuff I'm going to show you. Uh, but let's go to a close-up and I'll show you a couple of these little chord variations you might like to add into. So the first chord substitution I'd like to show you kind of emulating the keyboard is uh, on the second line of the verse which is the black market man lyric. Uh, and we're going to have D, G with a D bass, D7 to B7. It's a really nice little uh, change here. So just regular D chord for two strums. Now instead of a regular G chord, it's a G chord with a D bass, so we're just keeping the open fourth string. Okay, so nothing, nothing on the thickest two strings, then open, four, three, three. It's just the top part of that G bar chord, really. Okay, then we're going to a D7, okay, which is again open fourth string, fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret. And then you let those two fingers slide all the way down to the second fret, lifting off your first finger and you've got a nice movement to B7 chord. Okay, so D, G with a D bass, D7 to B7. And then it's gonna go back to the E minor. Okay, it's a really, just the kind of thing, you don't have to add it in. In fact, quite often you could just stay on a D chord there for that whole thing. You wouldn't have to do D, G, D anyway. You could just stay on the D and then to B7, you know, I've seen lots of people play it like that over the years, but uh, this is just a nice little fancy movement that you can add in. I think it sounds nice. It's kind of copying the piano part. So the second one I want to show you goes on the fourth line of the verse, and it comes after the line, and it's only other vets could understand. We've got a D chord to an E minor 7. 
Okay, so we're not playing the thickest two strings again, and we've got second fret, open, third fret, third fret. Then to a D with an F sharp bass. Okay, this is a little bit of a sticky one, and if you really struggle with it, I'd just leave this one out, but it, it does sound nice. This is the nothing on the thickest two strings, fourth fret, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, and then back to D. So you have D, E minor seven, D with an F sharp bass, and back to D. Okay, while we're on a close-up, let me show you a kind of an approximation of the piano part as well for the intro, because uh, I haven't shown you that yet. So, uh, a nice way of playing it is just the open D string, hammer on the second finger in the second fret, open third string, hammer on the second finger in the second fret, then we've got a G. This is like the super laziest G ever, I'm actually only using one finger, so third finger is playing the G note, muting the fifth string, open, 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 and then muting as well the thinner string. So the highest note we hear is actually the second string. We're just using that one finger. He's doing a lot of muting work as well. So G, D with an F sharp bass, but I'm only playing the thickest four strings and the fifth string's muted as well. So second, mute, open, second. Two strums on that. E minor to D, C, C with a B bass. So with the C with the B bass, I've just literally moved second finger over to the uh, fifth string. So second fret of the fifth string, lifted off my third finger. Okay, that's the middle four strings only really. Then A minor to D7. You could go regular D as well. I think it's D on the recording, but D7 sounds just as right. So that whole thing, nice and slow. Okay, let me play through that whole verse now so you can see all of the chords in action. Here we go. So one thing I noticed when I was doing that close-up is I didn't really explain what I was doing strumming-wise for the first verse, because I'm not doing the whole strumming pattern yet, and probably you don't want to either. The first verse is a little bit more open than that. And basically I'm just strumming when I need to, but I can add in a few more if I like. Important thing is keeping the hand moving. So you'll notice even though I'm not playing, So it's just moving, the strumming hand keeps moving all the time and you just strum when you want. So usually where there's a chord change, but again, have a listen to the original recording and see where you feel it, where you want to put the strumming, because there really isn't any proper rules like that, the way that you should play it. So you've got all of the pieces of the puzzle now, but what you've got to do is go and listen to the original recording and work out what order to put the pieces in. So for the instrumental section, you're just using the chord sequences from the verse, but they're ever so slightly different. So what are they? You can use your ears to figure that out. And the same for the ending in verse five, ever so slightly different at the end there, but I'm sure if you've done a little bit of practice on this and you've got the song in your head and you know what the chords are, you should be able to figure it out by ear without too much hassle. So I really hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.